So uh, today we're looking at some Browse Blade stuff. I have two uh, SSFs or Silent Soldier flippers. I have an original G10 version, liner lock with the black wash. Made in the USA. Um, very interesting design. I think one of Jason's, if not the first design he ever came out with. It was one of the originals. Um, and this is the import version. Okay, this is the the newer, cheaper version of this knife. All right. So before I get into comparing these, because that's what most of the video is, is kind of comparing them. I think this has a ton of advantages over the more expensive version. This one originally two hundred thirty dollars. This one ninety bucks. All right, or eighty nine more specifically. Um, there is a cheaper version even that at sixty nine that just has satin hardware and a satin finished blade, uh, but the blackout version is twenty dollars more. I think it's a cooler version. But anyway, um, let's talk about the import line in general because I think it's worth discussing. So if you don't know the backstory, uh, Jason was dealing with some people ripping off his designs. I think possibly the mini division. I think there was a direct copy of that design made in China being sold at like Tractor Supply. And that was an issue for a long time. And um, I don't know if that's been resolved or not. There's been other copies. I mean, you guys know the story. If you're, uh, you know, an upcoming knife maker, custom knife designer, once you start gaining popularity, like Jason did, you start getting a following. There starts to be a demand for your knives. Word spreads, you know. And there's people overseas that, you know, stay on top of this kind of stuff. What is selling? What's popular? What do people want? So anyway, uh, he was dealing with the very common problem of people ripping off his designs. But he did something extremely, extremely smart, and I would love to see other knife makers do this. But he decided that if there's gonna be a cheaper version of his knife, that he's gonna be the one making it. And obviously it was smart from a business standpoint, but also um, he was able to offer his same designs for people who couldn't afford you know, his custom knives, which I think was awesome. I mean, it did a lot. A lot of different things happened by him deciding to do this, which was a very good choice. Um, so yeah, so I was able to get one of these as soon as they came out. I was using it recently and now I want to give you my opinions on it. So right off the bat, these are sporting the same steel. They're both in D2, which is really interesting. First of all, D2 is like the steel of 2018. I don't know, like every knife is made in D2. I have nothing against it. I'm just saying a lot of people complain there's like lack of variety these days. I think it's an awesome steel and that's why a lot of people are making it. But anyway, um, that aside, what's interesting is the fact that they're both offered in D2. Most of the time, you guys see this, if you see a very expensive knife or a custom knife or a very high-end knife, they will have usually premium steels and then the cheaper version will have, especially if it's made in China, you'll see HCR 13 MOV or something similar. In this case, you're getting the same steel, $230, $90 less than half the price, same performance. In theory, now I will say I did not use these side by side enough to really know if it's the same exact heat treat and the same performance, because D2 is D2, and on a molecular you know, level, it's the same steel, but when you do heat treats, obviously you guys know if you do a poor heat treat, you will have less performance out of that steel. So in theory, they should perform the same, um, but it would take a lot more testing and like I said, I have to do literally side by side cut tests and stuff, which I've not done. I've carried and used both these knives. This one most recently, that one I had to break out from the collection to, uh, you know, to reuse and kind of get a feel for it again to compare. But yeah, I mean, I can't, I don't know for sure if it's the same exact source and the same heat treat process and all that kind of stuff. That's up to you guys to, to find out if you care enough about that, but they're both in D2. They both come sharp and they both work. So real quick, here are the boxes, all right? The import has a different sticker on it. I don't know if this is consistent or not. It has a couple different sticker designs, but a plastic bag, but same box. And the original here, bag with a card, and of course, certificate of authenticity, which matches the serial number, just like you get with all of his you know, US stuff. All right, so here's the knives. Again, this is the import. Give you some quick specs, 2.5 inches uh, on our blade length. Uh, of course it is a Warncliffe design, which should be obvious. Close, 3.8 inches. All right, open 6.3 inches and it's 4.2 ounces. Um, as far as the handle material, it is stated that it is polymer. Simply polymer, which we know is a fancy word for plastic. It doesn't say specifically what kind of plastic. 
Um, we know the original one here is G10. This was also offered in a carbon fiber version at some point. Um, there is a honeycomb pattern on here, which gives a very nice grip. Like I really, really like the way this one feels. Of course, this particular one is very smooth. Something else too, and the difference, and this is the difference between paying a lot of money for a knife and not so much money for a knife. Um, if you look at, like for example, all the grind marks or the grind lines here, let me do a, a zoom in. I don't know why, it's always better, better quality. You can see how they're all rounded off, okay? Whereas the cheaper Chinese made one, I mean, it's it's a little bit worn on the very edges. That's the look, you know, from being tumbled or stonewashed. But it just looks like it's more of a worn knife. That's not from use. That's just, you know, how you get them. Obviously, you can hold it down here, which secures a very nice grip, but the main feature in this one is the hole in the blade to choke up. Now, as far as using this, uh, you know, for really rough cutting and stuff, it is an awesome option. Um, it is never going to close on you like this, but if for some reason it happens to start to close, it's going to pinch your finger before anything ever cuts you. All right. And as far as defensive situation, any type of knife style where your finger is through the blade or through the knife anywhere on the knife, like for example, a crambit, um, you're not going to let go of that knife unless your finger is removed from your hand. All right. So very, very effective. As far as reverse grip, you can put your pinky through here. Not quite as comfortable. Way more comfortable like this, but again, in the forward grip, it's very comfortable like that. Tons of jimping on the top. And I will compare import on the left. You can see the cuts, similar pattern, but the center cut is wider on the import. As far as how it, how it feels, it is more aggressive. Definitely more aggressive because of that wider center cut. So overall, I mean, this is smoother. It's more well finished, um, but this has a more aggressive feel to it, particularly because of those scales. I just, I really, really like the scales a lot. It's very, very cool. Something else to notice real quick. This one has a touch of up and down play. All right. Um, that's how I got this. I got this uh, secondhand. I don't know the original owner. Uh, what they did with it, if it came like that, it was never actually mentioned at all. Something I just discovered one day. Um, I know if I send it back to Jason, his QC is amazing. He would take care of it right away. It'd either be replaced or fixed, no problem, no questions asked. It doesn't really bother me that much. That's why I haven't you know, bothered with it. Um, but blade, there is no blade play at all with this one. Okay, there's nothing. Um, as far as the pocket clips, you can see the pocket clip design. On both of these same style clip but the import there's two screws to mount whereas one on the original and obviously the logo is a little bit different all right but pretty much similar in the cutout the paddle on the ends are a little different as well but overall same kind of feel how they carry the original one is a deeper concealed carry as opposed to the import all right so if you're used to carrying this it's going to carry a little bit higher and again, while we're looking at the back here, you can see that there is a steel, or metal, I should say. It's probably stainless steel. Um, backspacer, adding a little bit to the weight and to the feel. It's also very smooth as compared to the polymer or plastic um, ridged or jimped spacer in this one. All right, so you do definitely feel that. As far as uh, the action, the action is awesome on both of them. Very good detent. Um, I do love the flipper on this one. It's just totally unique. No knives out there really have a flipper this low in this particular you know shape. Very, very easy to use. I literally push it in like a button. All right, it looks like you might sweep down, which you probably could. You know, you can sweep down with it, but as you can see, for me at least, it's not as effective as pushing it in literally like a button. All right, just like the original, just as effective, extremely smooth opening and closing. Now, something else I think is worth mentioning, it's not a big deal at all, but it's just something I noticed and, and noticed quite a bit in switching back and forth between these. When disengaging the uh, liner lock on the original, okay, sometimes with liner locks, when you're going to close the blade, there's a little resistance. What the resistance is, is the blade pushing the liner back over, okay? So a lot of times it's the little, the tiny ball bearing that's in there, and it's just literally, it's rubbing it and pushing it over so it can, you know, allow the blade to, to move down. 
Now, if you disengage a liner lock and start closing it, they all have a tiny bit of that resistance, but this resistance is right there and it's barely a resistance. Compared to the import, all right, when I disengage and I start coming down, it stops right there. And it's a little bit harder to overcome the liner lock. So you can see the two different angles. So long story short, um, I don't really notice it with this knife. I open it, I go to disengage. I'm already past that right now. So when I move my thumb up here to close, smooth sailing. With this one, it's just in the right position where when I go to bring my thumb up, it's resting at the edge of the liner lock. So I have to use more force to overcome that. Not a huge deal at all, okay? But it is something I definitely noticed. So if you listen, if I shut up for a second. Okay, that's the blade grabbing as I'm coming down. It's grabbing the liner lock and pushing it over out of the way. Not a huge deal, but again, certainly worth mentioning. As far as, um, you know, comparing the two here, you can see the pocket clip is swappable to left side carry. This is only a tip up knife, but it is interesting. You do have an extra option with the import. All right, it is super smooth, just like the original. This has a bearing system, all right? And there's enough of a, uh, a detent that gives you the pressure you need that's gonna pop out fully every single time. All right, sometimes when you have a weak, you know, detent, you get these like half openings and stuff. It's not really gonna happen. If you, like I said, push in almost like a button, pops open and locks up perfectly every single time. All right, so I'm zoomed in here for another thing that I have noticed right away when I started, uh, you know, comparing these and using them. Uh, and that is the bevel, okay? This is sharpened, I'll use this as a pointer. The original is on the right, or I should say not the original, but the, uh, the G10 version, you know, the American version is on the right, the import's on the left. You can see that this is sharpened all the way down to the Ricasso here, okay? Giving you every millimeter of cutting edge that's possible. Whereas on the original here, it comes up a little bit short. All right, so you're missing like a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less of possible cutting edge, okay? Which is pretty interesting. You'd think it would be, you know, the opposite. So that's it for now, guys. Uh, I do have another browse import model. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that picture I posted, so you'll know which one it is. But that I'm putting on the back burner for now, just because I have other knives I wanna finish up and, and finish testing and carrying, uh, so I could do those reviews first. Uh, but yeah, you will see that in the future. Overall, I think this was a complete home run. I love it. It is a cheaper version of a very classic design. If you do follow his work and you like his work, but you never can really afford you know, some of his models, now he has cheaper versions. I mean, what's not to like about that? It is a huge thumbs up because it's a kick in the face of the people copying his designs without permission. It is another huge thumbs up because now people can, uh, or more people, I should say, can afford his designs. Overall, it's a win. So I will leave you guys with this question. Are there any other custom knife makers out there that are offering a cheaper version of their knives using the exact same steel? That's what blows me away by this. I was really, really expecting a, you know, something CR something MOV. That's what I was totally expecting on this. And when I found out it was D2, I'm like, that's awesome. I just, I've never seen that before. I've seen, you know, uh, cheaper versions like, a lot of times custom makers will work with companies like CRKT. It's a great example where you're able to try their designs cheaper. They're those collaborations, you know, very popular, expensive knives. Okay, here's a cheaper version, production version from a good, reliable company. Uh, you see that all the time, but you generally don't see it with the same exact steels. That's pretty cool. Now, D2 to me is middle of the road steel. I think it's a very good, very usable steel. It's not top shelf. It's not bottom of the barrel either. All right, so maybe that makes a huge difference here. Obviously, you're not gonna see a $400 knife in S35VN and then also see an $80 version in S35VN. So maybe it's an unfair comparison, but if you guys know of another maker doing this, let me know down in the comments, but I'm pretty impressed. It was a very smart idea on uh, Jason's part, in my opinion, and uh, everyone wins with this. Honestly, I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, if you guys get into the uh, the Browse imports, let me know what you think of them, particularly if you're a Jason Browse fan and you have the originals. That's what I'm most interested in, is seeing comparisons from the original to some of these import models. But anyway, that is it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.